Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking cassette tapes. As you can see, I got a bunch in the background here. So part of this channel and what I want to do is talk about living our best life as we have already pretty much lived a life, basically. And what I mean by that is like, if you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, that sort of thing, just um, taking this time to realize that this is a time for reflection, it's a time for self-care, it's a time for just relishing in accomplishment. And one of these accomplishments that we have is music. And what I mean by that is like the music that we listened to when we were a kid. Do you remember when, uh, <laughs> When we had those uh, big yellow Walkmans, if you had one, big yellow Walkmans with the uh, the yellow um, wire that went up, and you had the ring around, went around your head. You didn't have all the eye, the pods or any of that sort of stuff. These things here. So if you check it out, remember these big yellow Walkmans here? These were the best. I use these. I use these all the time when I was out. Um, I'd be out exercising or whatever, and a lot of these tapes came with me. So I want to talk about a few of the cassette tapes, some of the stuff that I listened to. Maybe it'll bring up a memory in your mind and just a little bit of something fun to rejuvenate that spark inside of us to go back to our old school ways of music. Talking about Reigniting Your Spark, I just wrote a book, Reignite Your Spark, just getting started by me. Yep, there's me again. But the book is really about how we find our purpose again. And even if we didn't lose our purpose, how to rejuvenate, how to reignite the purpose that we do have uh, when it comes to you know, living the most optimal life and the best life that there is possible. So I wanna be able to just give you positive outlook, feedback, news, reminiscing. We're gonna do everything with what I do with tips in business and fitness and just kind of talk about stuff that's going on and stuff that resonated with us when we were when we were younger and that we wanna bring up now, but we can still do it now when we're at an able age to do those fun things, okay? Like play until it gets to be maybe too late, if ever, but um, without happiness and rejuvenation and, and what I call like a, a midlife manifestation, I just don't know if you, if you don't work on it now during this midlife time that you may be having, and if you're younger and listening to this and you're just rejuvenating or, or trying to find a passion, that's totally cool as well. So I wanna talk about all these things on this channel. But first, cassette tapes. So when we talk about cassette tapes, do you realize that the brand new tape back in the day when I bought one of these, we'll pull out, uh, pull out Motley Crue. Motley Crue, girls, girls, girls. I still have the original tape in here. And look at this, so this is when they were doing the tapes with the, uh, it, I thought it was the coolest thing when they had the black in here and then they uh, they wrote all the, the songs on here. And of course you'd have side one, side two that would go in your Walkman, you just take this for a run. And then even in the cassette tape, in the, the plastic itself, these things, I used to have thousands of these laying around, but you'd have like the liner notes and they would squeeze, they would squeeze all the credits in here and they would squeeze all of the, uh, all the words, which now that I'm older, yeah, I can't, I can't read this worth a, I can't read this pretty much at all. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I still have these. This is something that I utilize and, and, and played as a kid. Let's talk about this record here. Let's see, we had Wild Side, good song. Girls, 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 uh, Dancing on Glass, Bad Boy Boogie, Nona, Five Years Dead, All in the Name of, Something for Nothing, You're All I Need, and then they had like some Jailhouse Rock, I guess some filler or whatever, but this was on Elektra Records back in the day. Big seller for Motley Crue. This was one of my favorite records, but I have to tell you, Dr. Feelgood that came out after this, probably their best record ever, in my opinion. So, um, but yeah, we would buy these cassettes for like five bucks at whatever record store. I don't know if you're from Atlanta, maybe it was Turtles, Sam Goody, Warehouse, Tower Records. You remember all those? It was so much fun as a kid to go and get a cassette tape, a new one from one of your favorite artists and just be able to just get lost in the mix, literally the mix, right? So this made music portable by having these sorts of uh, things. 
uh, when you look at like Iron Maiden, look at the look at the art. You know this guy pulling out a I don't even know what it is intestines. Um, but you know, as a kid, you're getting this. This is a uh, seventh son. Yeah, seventh son of a seventh son. I think there was like two songs on this. Uh, yeah, can I play with madness and the evil that men do? I think those are the only two songs I actually listened to on this cassette. So there'd be a lot of time. Hey, it's five bucks, right? Um, if you got one or two songs off of it, you were doing good. Uh, this is old school. This is one of my favorite records still to date. Even in the liner notes of this uh, Van Halen, there's only one sleeve. <clears throat> this must have been on the cheap because this was like, you know, half uh, half cut out. But Fair Warning by, by Van Halen, one of my favorite records ever and still to date is. I remember walking up through the woods in the trail because I didn't have a car. And I had originally purchased 1984 by Van Halen and, and then decided that I really liked them. And I went and all, bought all the rest of the records at the, uh, at the record store. So the other things that I would do as well is, you know, I would have people make me or I'd make myself cassette tapes of some bands. So like, this is The Cult, this is Love and Electric. And, you know, somebody had written these out for me and this was just a Maxwell 90 tape. And he would just write on there, Love and Electric. And each album was on each side like that. So you would just burn it off of a, You'd put, you'd have a double deck. I remember when we, I got my first double deck, so I could, I could put one, like the original, I could burn a tape for one of my friends or something like that. And so some of my friends did that for me as well. Uh, looks like I did that on The Cult. Looks like I did that on White Snake. There's some artist in here I don't even remember buying. I don't even remember having some soundtracks. My mom made me these. This was uh, Bruce Springsteen live. So my mom made me, God, this is in 1986. You can see her handwriting in 1986 on there and Bruce Springsteen cassette tapes. And she would uh, she would burn these for me, I believe off of albums. Cause my mom had albums back and she just stacks albums. She probably still has them going, my mom. Um, and then of course you would have the old school tapes that were like this. This was the Rocky four soundtrack. So they would just have the, um, you know, the tape itself printed on a, a solid color like that. I'm not really sure what my first cassette, well, I, I am sure actually it was a uh, Van Halen 1984. I had, uh, what else did I have? I had, um, uh, Penny Lover, um, and I had Michael Jackson Thriller. I'm not seeing any of those in there. They might be somewhere else, but yeah, this is just a little throwback to memory lane of some of the cassettes and the, and the tapes that I had. We would also get mixtapes um, if you're, you know, my age or, you know, a little bit younger. We would get mixtapes from our significant others. Uh, I remember I would get love tapes in the mail from Teenage Young Love, and it would be a burn of all sorts of different songs from, you know, different ballads from the different rock. I was very much in the 80s and the hair metal and stuff like that. But I, I, I listened, to, I still listen to a lot of those songs today. And it's so funny how now just on our phone, it's like, okay, it's right there at our fingertips. But this was so much fun to collect these. We used to have stacks and towers of tapes. And then, you know, obviously CDs came out after that. But, you know, these were fun to put into our Walkman. And of course, we'd have to rewind the song when it, you know, had, you know, came run its course. Or we'd flip over the cd or the the cassette and we'd listen to side b and um it was definitely a different time it's hard to believe that this was the technology and the way that we did it and now we just take our iphone and, and literally just hit play on something which is completely mind-boggling to me still today but i enjoy it I, I i embrace it for sure and then the other thing too that was really cool which we don't really do today because everything's on demand is we would sit by the radio and again, I'll go back to Van Halen because they're still one of my favorite bands ever. And I remember when their albums, before their albums would come out, the radio stations would be playing it. And this is, you know, back when we had radio stations, we would sit here at our, you know, just, at, you know, waiting on our, for the words to come out of the DJ's mouth. Like, and now the new Van Halen from OU812. And I just remember being up in my bedroom, there's a song called Black and Blue. And I, I believe it was like the first sort of snippet that they played off the record. And I would just wait and wait on top of the hour. And then they have the commercial and they'd suck you in. And you know, all that stuff was really what it pertained to back then. It was crazy. And I would just hit record and play, you know, right 
as they would start it. And I would just listen to that song after I played on the radio over and over and over again on a cassette tape like this. Just one song, and that would get me through until maybe they released another single on the radio, and then after that, the album would come out, and it was just, it was just great memories. That's it on on cassette tapes. I mean, there's so much more we could talk about. So many other things we could go through. Uh, I'm curious to hear about like what are some of your favorite artists? What first cassette tape that you bought? What are some artists that you think about now in in today? If you're in your 50s and and, and 60s and even 40s, and you still listen to it was like one of the first things you downloaded on your phone to listen to again to bring you back to that identity of being a kid and just feeling that energy that youthful energy that you can still have now through music which music is just a great gift i talk about that a lot in in the book that i've written check it out please if you get a chance subscribe to this youtube channel check out my website i am the uh, i love music i love playing as you can see i've got my my Eddie Van Halen up here, and I've got my guitars back here, and uh, just enjoying the ride for now. So until then, peace out. <laughs>